Hello everyone. Good evening. Um, thank you so much to Connie from the Angels and Cowboys group for inviting me on to do a live with you guys. So my name is Brandy Collinborn and I am the owner and artisan behind Brushed by Brandy. Um, if you guys don't already, please go check out my Facebook and Instagram pages at Brushed by Brandy um, and give me a follow if you like what you see. I also have a YouTube channel with a whole bunch of videos up on there. Hi, I see some people are coming on. Okay, let me know you guys can see and hear me okay. Um, so tonight I've been invited on to teach a class with you guys and I'm so excited. I'm going to be teaching a class on Dixie Bell Patina Paint. And um, I put my link in the top of this post if any of you guys are interested in the pro products I'm using tonight. Um, these are all going to be Dixie Bell products that I'm using. Hi Connie. Um, so patina paint, if you're not familiar with it, this is the containers it comes in. It comes in copper, bronze, and iron. All good. Thank you. Thank you. That's such a relief. Um, it comes in copper, bronze, and iron. And what patina paint is, is it has actual metal flakes in the paint itself. And so when you add it to your piece and then you follow it up with a corrosive spray, it will naturally corrode the metal that's inside of the paint to give you a realistic corroded metal look. So copper, you get a verdigris copper finish, which is those, you know, the teal and greens that copper turns when it wears outside. Um, bronze gives you a really nice dark color with a little bit of blues and greens in it. It's really pretty. Um, and then iron, iron of course turns to rust when it wears. So you get the orange, really orangey copper. Now, when you're using these, because they have actual metal in them, you get texture on your piece. It would be, so for example, if you're using iron, um, it would be like going out to your garden and touching a rusty wheelbarrow. It's really gonna create that level of rust on your furniture piece. Um, so the piece I'm working on today is this one here. And um, this one, I actually have the privilege of knowing where this is going. Um, I have a customer who asked me to do this piece and I'm gonna show you guys what my inspiration is. So he is going to use this for a vintage record player and then inside is going to be album storage, which is perfect. This is the perfect size piece for that. Thank you, Connie, for sharing my page. So I'm gonna show you what our inspiration is if you guys can see this. So this is an album cover. It's, it's a queen album cover, just a vintage album cover from the 70s. And um, it's got the orange tones in it. So you've got, we've got some orange over here. We've got kind of these mixed blues and greens and grays in here, and then a little bit of the metallics in here as well. So this is what we're using as our inspiration. And when I am doing custom work and I know the who the customer is gonna be, um, I ask for as many pictures as they can give me, whether it's from Pinterest or something they love in their home, fabrics they're keeping, a wall color, anything that they can send me um, for inspiration. And that's kind of where I'm pulling my inspiration from this one. So it's gonna be really industrial looking and. So this piece right here, I'm going to go ahead and turn it and show you guys how I got started. Um, let's see, let me lower my camera just a little bit so you guys can see my piece better. Hi, Susan. Um, so this is what I started with on this piece. And this is just a clean base of Dixie Bell in Gravel Road, which is a dark gray color. Um, I chose Gravel Road because I like to put a base coat of paint under my patina. Um, and that's just to ensure that when I create that uh, decayed metal look, that anything that shows underneath is covered in paint. So um, in this case, I've got a coat of nice dark gray underneath my patina. Um, I chose Gravel Road because it was just a paint that I had. It was, the container was getting a little bit old. I wanted to use it, but any, you know, dark color, um, hurricane gray, coffee bean, um, anything like that would serve the same purpose. It's not really going to show a whole lot. So now I've got a single coat on here, a single coat of the gravel road. And now I'm gonna come behind with a fine grade sanding sponge. This is a 120, but it's a really worn 120. So I say a 220 is usually good for this. So I'm just gonna come give this a light sand. I don't even like to call it sanding because I think sanding gets intimidating. Um, I just call it really brushing with a sanding sponge. And all that brushing does, it just takes down any like little nubs or particles of dust that have gotten stuck in my piece. And then I will come behind with just a damp rag 
and I will just take off any dust that's on my piece. So now I've got my base coat on. It's got a nice smooth finish on there. Um, and I'm going to take on this piece here, I'm using um, primarily the bronze patina paint and the iron. Um, I'm going to do little hints of copper in there and then we're going to mix in some metallics. So I'm going to take my brush. This is just a Dixie Belle Mini. I love their brushes. They're super nice and soft. The synthetic bristles are made specifically for painting with chalk style paints. Um, so they hold just the right amount of paint. And I'm going to open up my patina paint. Um, because this has those metal particles in there, I always like to make sure I don't just shake my container, but I actually like to stir it. And I just use, this is like a mini spatula from the kitchen section at, you know, Home Goods. So I'm just going to stir it up really good and make sure I pick up all those little medical, medical, metal particles that might be, you know, hanging out on the bottom of my container and really make sure it's mixed in. Um, that way I get a nice, even coverage with, with the metal. Um, there are a few products in the Dixie Bell line that I like to stir, not just shake. And one of them is always my patina paint. Another one is Dixie Bell Gator Hide. We are actually going to seal this with Gator Hide. So I'm going to wipe off my little spatula here. And we will get started laying our paint on. So I'm going to pull this straight from my container. And these uh, metallics actually get really good coverage. There's no reason you have to use these with the corrosive spray. If you just wanted a bronze metallic finish, um, the patina paint can be used without the corrosive spray and it actually comes out really pretty. They're very rich metallics. So I'm just gonna brush on an even coat. This is the bronze. Um, and I'll show you guys the technique I'm using in just a minute. Right now I'm just trying to get coverage throughout my piece. But because I'm going to go for kind of a, you know, age rustic metal look, I'm going to now take this and I'm going to use my brush and give it kind of a cross hatching pattern. And I'm going to bring it in closer so you can see the, the strokes that my brush is actually making on this. So if I go through and cross hatch this, this will give me kind of a brushed metal look on my finished piece. I'm deliberately making these brush strokes. Um, just going back and forth with my brush to create them. And that's because it's because I have that, you know, industrial feeling inspiration. I want to have texture in this. So you can kind of see metallics are fun because they catch the light. Um, they're reflective. Oh, I did my range hood. I know. So Connie, I did. I painted my range hood. Um, and we want to get it hung, but I have to move some cabinets in my kitchen. Um, so it's going to be a little while before I can hang it, but we have the range hood inside at least. Now I'm going to dip into my iron patina paint. Um, but I will be posting my range hood soon. So again, I'm going to stir this really good. I think the iron needs a stirring probably more than any of the patina paints. Um, just gets a little bit of sediment settling at the bottom. So I just kind of pick it up and make sure my spoon isn't picking up any chunks of metal down there. By chunks of metal, I, it's not chunks, it's actually, it's very fine, you, know, you won't even see it, but it can kind of settle. So now I'm going to take my iron patina paint, and for the iron I'm focusing kind of down here at the bottom, so it's going to be a gradation where the legs are going to be kind of rusty and then go up into this more bronzy color up here. So I'm going to take a new brush, just a clean brush, but I'm gonna do the same thing I just did with my bronze, and I'm just gonna brush in. I'm not trying to keep them um, in separate areas, I'm letting them mix, because it creates a really cool look when you spray this with the corrosive spray. The bronze and the iron are gonna be mixed together. You'll get the patina of both um, intertwined with each other. And I'm just using that same cross hatched, cross hatching pattern, um, just to give me some variation in there. Come down here and get these legs. I'm not trying to keep it clean with brush strokes. I'm, you know, letting it go. 
which is kind of nice with this, you know, this is a really easy technique. It gives you a really cool look, but that's because the paint really does most of the work for you. Um, so it'll look like I'm super talented, but really I'm just cheating and letting the paint work for me. Oh, that's okay, Susan. I understand. Are you not talking to me right now? I'm just kidding. Um, so now I'm going to turn this this way. And this is the front of my piece. And um, this has already, the patina paint has already dried. So the coat that we just put on the side, this has exactly the same thing where it's got a base of the gravel road and then it's got the bronze patina paint and the iron below it, only this is already dry. So this is where the magic happens. Once your first coat of the patina paint is already dry, you can come back with your second coat and this is where we're gonna add the sprays. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my sprays ready. And when you order the sprays, they come in this container and they have an actual spray top. Um, you don't wanna store your spray top on top of your bottle. So after I'm done using this, I will flush out this sprayer and I will store this separately and put the black top on. The reason is because a sprayer has um, metal in it, the spring and stuff that make it spray for you. And if you leave this on, this is corrosive. It will corrode metal. So it will end up corroding your spray bottle and these won't spray. You'll get one use of it and go back after a month to use it again and this will be like crusted. So I always take this out, flush it clean and then store it with the black lid on the top that it comes with. But I'm going to use a secret. And tonight I'm going to spray my patina spray out of a mister bottle. So I'm going to take this and pour this into my own mister bottle. And all this is going to do is it will give me a really nice, even coverage of my, my patina. So I just sprayed a little bit into a mister bottle. Same thing with this. When I'm done with it, I want to flush out my mister, pour this liquid back into my original container and store it this way. But I just want to use that, um, you know, I want to get that nice, even, fine misting spray from my mister bottle. So I'm going to put a wet coat of patina paint on here. And while our coat is still wet, that's when I'm going to go ahead and spray that corrosive spray on here. So I'm going over it the same way I did my first coat. I'm brushing the, I'm starting out with the iron, but I'm going to brush my bronze and my iron into each other. I'm using that same cross hatching pattern. I'm just going to work on this half of the piece for now, and I will come back and do that half separately. You want to um, kind of work in smaller sections because you do have to spray your um, patina spray while your paint is still wet. So this is fun because I get to be kind of messy with it. I'm not trying to pay attention to having a really, you know, smooth, even base coat or anything. I want all this texture. Um, you know, if you're going to have a rusty piece, then you've got to have some texture with it. So that was the iron. Now I'm going to come back with the bronze. Yeah, the limit, good to know the limit the sprayer. You want to know how I learned that? The hard way. <laughs> um, yeah, so not only that, not only because it's corrosive, a corrosive material, but the metal particles can dry up inside your sprayer nozzle and it will crust your sprayer. I mean, no matter what, you just don't want to store the, the nozzle inside, the, um, inside with the corrosive spray. So same thing, this is the bronze, and I just use that random cross-hatching pattern. I'm gonna make sure that I get good overlap between the iron and the bronze above it. So I'm brushing them together. So this middle section right here really has both of those metals in it. Um, my husband is usually with me to answer my questions, read my questions for me, he's at work still. We are in California, so it's only five o'clock here. Um, so I'm trying to read my questions at the same time. Um, anything that I can't answer while I'm live though, I always will make sure I go back and answer any questions you guys have afterwards. You're also welcome to message me. Um, I will get this piece finished in the next few days and then you'll see it posted on my page. Okay. So I really like the blue patina spray 
with the bronze paint, but I like the green patina spray with the iron paint. You can see the color difference. This is the green, this is the blue. So I'm gonna take my blue spray, it's in my mister bottle, and I'm gonna spray it right over the top of this. Um, the mister just helps keep me from getting, um, I don't so much want that drippy look from the patina, I want it to be a nice kind of even patina. Now I only have one mister bottle to put my patina spray in. So this one, the green, I'm going to spray out of their container that it comes in. So I just took the lid off. I'm gonna add my nozzle here and I'm gonna spray the green out of this. Um, the reason I like the green is, is the green is just more reactive with the iron paint. You'll get more variation in your patina. If you spray iron patina paint with blue spray, it reacts, it just gives you a very, you know, very muted reaction. You don't get the variety of the colors in it. Um, that's just the formulation and the type of metal that it is. So I'm gonna bring you guys in here. Um, you can see it's starting to change color. And let me turn this light down. You can see it's starting to change color in here a little bit. So. While I'm on screen painting today, you'll see this starting to change and it's going to keep changing well into, I won't see a final result on this until probably tomorrow morning. So now I'm going to come back with my green spray. I'm going to do kind of a test spray. I want it to be on a mist, not a stream. So you can play with this little nozzle here. And I'm going to keep it back kind of far away from my piece because I, I just want that mist to hit it just like I did at the top. And I'll spray a little bit of the green up here into the bronze. That just gives me a little bit more variation. So I will also say the iron paint also takes a little bit longer to react. So we can see the bronze already starting to react. The iron will be a little bit slower. Now I've got some spray on here. I'm gonna brush it into my paint. And this is gonna give me that I don't want that drippy or sprayed look. I want it to be more of a brushed look, if that makes sense. So I'm not using any pressure. I'm just brushing to give more of an even distribution to the spray into the paint. I'm keeping it from, you know, being so drippy looking. Okay, and now I'm gonna go ahead and give it another spray. This is my blue in the mister bottle. Very light spray, just really kind of even coverage. And I'm going to come back with the green also onto the iron, keeping it back just to get that little bit of mist. And I have drips coming right here and I don't want that drippy look. So I'm going to clean those up a little bit. Otherwise, it's not enough liquid that it's actually dripping. It's kind of staying in place. And that's what the mister bottle does. So this is the hard part about patina paint. You have to wait. So I'm gonna turn this and we're gonna let this work its magic. I'm gonna turn this and we'll work on the side over here and then I'll turn it back in a few minutes and we'll see what's going on with it. The waiting is the hardest part. And you know what, you wanna to try to accelerate it with you know, using a heat gun or whatever else. It doesn't turn out the same as just waiting. So while it is hard to be patient, it's totally worth it in the end. Now I'm gonna come back. This has already the same thing that our front did. It has one coat of the uh, patina paint on it, um, but no sprays yet. So I'm gonna take my sanding sponge. Again, I'm not really sanding. I'm just brushing down any lumps that are in there. You know, the little dust and that really dry chalky feeling that chalk paint gets. I lost my rag. This is a damp rag. I'm just gonna wipe away all that sanding dust. A little bit of dust I created and now it's ready for my second coat of paint. Starting out with the bronze. You can see the cross hatching pattern, how it dried. This is a pretty finish as it is. If you wanted this as your finish, I've done a finish like this before. You hate the waiting game. I know it's torture and I've tried to like, accelerate it and it just doesn't look the same. It almost like 
sense it by trying to put a heat gun on it, it doesn't have the same intensity that just letting it dry naturally will. Um, but at least doing this way, we'll get to see some of the reaction on camera today. And then the final result, the real result, you'll get to see when I post pictures of the piece. Because this is all I'm going to do to this. Once this is dry and that my sprays are dry, I'll seal this with Dixie Belle Gator Hide. Um, and I'm not going to do anything else. So what you see is what you get with the patina paint. And that's actually kind of the scary thing about it is um, do what I can laying it on. But you, the metal is going to do its thing. You know, it's the rebel child of the chalk paint world. It's going to do what it wants. Um, the reaction. I've never had one turn out bad. And you can come back later and you can add more paint and a little more spray if there's, you know, areas that you want to touch up. I've even come back and like with rust, um, added like little spots of orange and stuff where I would just want to intensify it. But otherwise, for the most part, the paint does the work for you for this look. And people come back and they're like, wow, how'd you do that? And I'm like, I didn't do anything. It's just the paint. Okay, so I cross-hatched those two together. Move my comments so you can see. There you can see, if you move your comments aside, you can see the, the irons down on the bottom. It mixes into the bronze here. Um, and then the legs are all in, see the legs are all in the iron. So I'm going to have a lot of the oranges down here. This will be more of the cool, dark, um, uh, it's not even a brown. It's, it's a weathered bronze. I don't know what, what color you call weathered bronze. Almost a black. Um, so now I'm going to take my mister bottle with the blue. Get that nice, even coverage. And then I'm going to take my spray bottle with the green, keeping it back so I just get that fine mist hitting my piece. Okay, and I can see it's already starting to drip a little bit, and I'm trying to control that. So I'm going to take my brush just like we did on the front, and I'm going to brush that spray in. I can always add more spray if I want more reaction. Um, but I really just want to keep it from being super drippy. This is like the refined patina look, if that makes any sense. If there is a such thing as refined patina. Patina doesn't always have to be drippy. Okay. I can already see the colors starting to change in there. Um, I'm going to hit it with a little bit more of the spray. And then we'll turn it back to the front and just see what's going on over there. I don't expect it to be totally done, but we can at least see what's going on on the front. Oh, yeah, there you go. See, it's so exciting. I love putting the paint. So I do feel like I want a little bit more reaction up here. But you can see how the blues are starting to come out in the bronze paint. Like I told you, the iron takes longer to react, so the iron's going a little bit slower. I'm not getting the oranges yet, but you've got to be patient. Trust me on this. It will come. Um, I'm going to spray a little bit more. It's really cool, though. Okay. I'm just hitting it with a little bit more spray. Not enough that it starts dripping though, because again, I'm still trying to really keep it from being drippy. So I have a little bit of drips up here. I'm gonna clean those up and brush them a little bit into my paint. I might cover up some of the reaction I already have, but that's okay because it's gonna come back because that spray is still gonna be inside that paint and they're still gonna react. So it may look like I'm, I, I am, I'm setting myself back a little bit but that's okay because it's going to get me the look that I want in the end. I just don't want to have that really drippy look. I want it to be pretty even. Um, I'm going to move you guys in. I know. So, and then I'll show you what I'm doing on the top because the top actually has some other stuff in it. So I'm going to move you guys in and see if you can see. Can I turn the light on? No, that doesn't help. 
see how clear I can get a shot of. Can you see the, the iron starting to change? Yeah, probably not right now, but it is so cool. Well, let's come over and work on this next door right next to it, and we'll kind of watch this one reacting while I'm still painting. So, plus I have something else I'm gonna add to this other door. I'm going for kind of this asymmetrical, industrial looking vibe. So let me scoop my stool over. I don't wanna to touch this too much. Um, you guys, you also probably wanna do this in an open environment because when you spray those um, patina sprays, they are corrosive. Like I can kind of taste the metal in the air right now, which is a disgusting thing, but it's true. You can see from just the painted finish to the sprays on top of them, you can see how it's starting to react already. So it's super exciting. It almost looks like an oil slick going on right here with the oranges from the iron mixing into the blue from the um, uh, bronze. Sorry, um, lost my words there. It almost looks like an oil slick. So now let's come over and work on this other door for a second. Now with this one, I'm going to add a little bit of metallic paint. And that carries onto the top. I don't know, let's see, if you look at the top of my piece right here, can you see that with the reflection? I've got some metallic paint up here. It's a little bit of metallic silver, just in this corner, just in this corner. And that's just for like that hint of a shimmery effect. Um, if I pull up my inspiration photo again. So if you guys remember my inspiration photo, this uh, album cover, I've got some silver in there. So I just pulled in a little bit of silver metallic into the corner of my piece. And then see the variation in the background here? That's gonna be the kind of variation that appears in my patina paint. So rather than try to faux paint that, I am letting the patina do my work for me. So I'm gonna come in with a little bit of Dixie Belle. Um, this is their metallic silver. Um, I will say I'm using the Dixie Bell Metallics, but you'll notice that they're, they're a little bit missing from the Dixie Bell website right now. And that is because they are reformulating their metallics right now, which is exciting. Um, so keep an eye out for those, the new metallics coming out soon. Um, and, but for right now, if you've got any of the, this is Dixie Belle Silver Metallic that I'm gonna be using on this piece. So it's kind of asymmetrical where I've got the bronze kind of coming down a little heavier on the front here, and that metallic silver is gonna come down onto this corner here for that really asymmetrical look. So I just laid on a little bit of my iron, and then I'm gonna come back with my bronze. Same thing we did. And I'm sure you guys aren't even watching me because you're watching this over here start to transform already. I'm playing with my lighting to see what gives you a better picture, but it's probably better with none. So I really just want to show you how like kind of messy and haphazard you can be. Um, I also like with the patina paint, using some non-traditional painting tools can give you a really cool look. In fact, I've got one right here behind me. I move this aside. This is a patina piece here, and you can see in the corners, I've got um, some of the iron. You see the oranges gathered there. And you know what I applied it with? A basting brush, like for barbecuing. And I just kind of drug this along in the patina paint and it created this like violent like streaking in the patina and it's really cool it's really industrial looking this is so pretty you can see how this is turning orangey you can see how this is turning more blue so i probably have i'm going to even out my green spray i'm going to spray a little bit of the green up high so that I can try to even out some of the greens that are in here and get that to carry up a little bit higher too. Um, another thing is, so when this dries, it's gonna create what's called efflorescence, which is that powdery, 
substance that um, is created on decaying metal. And I'm going to come back after this is done and actually wipe some of that away to get down to the base of paint itself. Um, so that'll be one thing is it's going to be, it's going to dry with it really heavy. You're going to see a lot of the, um, that powdery patina. And I'm going to come back and even it out by just kind of wiping that away um, as it's drying. When it's dry, actually, I should say. Okay, so that's really pretty. Now I'm going to come back um, with that metallic paint, and I'm just going to add it a little bit into this corner so it can kind of be look like it's dripping down from the top. Um, I'm going to brush it in to my bronze paint, and that's going to give me a little bit of the bronze into the metallic, a little bit of the metallic Hi. into the bronze. Um, yeah. No one's here, but it's, I have no paint. He's okay. I already talked to Rebecca. Okay. What is he doing? Hi. So this is just a little bit of that metallic. It's lightening up my bronze. The places where the patina paint is inside the metallic, it's still going to decay. It'll just have a little bit less up in that area. This is my blue spray in my mister bottle. Okay. And then I'm carrying this um, iron down onto the legs. Let me mix up a little bit of the bronze in there too. And then we'll spray some of the iron down here. So this is a really hard process because from here, I'm gonna have to let this dry and see if I like how it looks. And then if I don't, I can come back and I can touch those areas up. I can add a little bit more of the iron if I feel like it needs more orange in a spot. Um, like here, I'm gonna brush a little bit into this bottom corner just so my top isn't totally void of the of the orange over here. Brush it into the leg. Um, yeah, weeding is the hardest part, but I swear this piece is gonna be gorgeous. You just kind of have to have a little bit of faith with patina paint. You guys see that? It's so cool. I'm gonna brush a little bit more of my iron up here into the bronze. Um, I don't want that definitive line, so I kind of brushed that line away that was being created here um, just to mix them together so that there's not that definitive line. So I feel like this is a cool point where I'm ready to hand over my faith to the patina and let it work its magic. I feel like this is looking really pretty. Um, it's gonna be really heavy on the blues over here. Where I've got this little bit of metallic up in the corner, it's just a little bit lighter than the rest of the body, but it's still gonna have some patina in there. Um, and then that cross hatching pattern gives it extra texture. So let's spray this leg down here. I'm gonna get a little bit of the green spray up into the top. And then we've been brushing the spray into our paint everywhere. So I wanna make sure that I do that so I get consistency across the front of my piece. It is pouring in California right now. What is this, December? It's crazy. Okay, so I brushed that in. Let's brush it into the iron down below. I know, I wish I could accelerate this and show you guys what it's gonna look like, but I can't, I just can't. So, if I back up, you guys can see now, it looks, it looks ridiculous right now. And I've left patina pieces being terrified at night, like, oh, I'm gonna have to repaint this, and then in the morning, they just look amazing. So, I'm to a point where you guys have seen how I put this finish on. Um, and you'll see the, the final results, but everything else in between, I have to let the paint do for itself. I'm adding a little bit of the iron down here onto the legs because I didn't really get those all the way. I want to go all the way around. 
Same with this slide that we did when we first came on. So this, this is the side that we did when we first came on, and it's pretty dry now. This, um, the patina paint actually dries really quickly, and you get really good coverage with it. So like I said, if you just wanted this metallic finish, it's a really pretty metallic finish too. If you want a nice dark bronze metallic or the copper metallic. Um, you can also come back, and if there's just little spots where you're like, I wish this had a little bit more rust around it, um, you can use Prima Marketing makes patina pastes that are an artificial way to create a patina look. And so I can come back and add a little bit of the patina paste to just amplify that look with paint in places that I want it to be more, a little bit more colorful. You love the patina part. I do too. I think they're, they're intimidating and that's because you really do have so little control. And also I think people look at them and they're like, you, the finishes that come out of them are, are nice complex finishes. So you think that it has to be, you know, a complex paint job and it's really not because the paint does it all for you. So you don't have to have any, you know, super huge talent level to be able to put this stuff on. So, on the front, on this side, my metallic is dripping down, so I'm gonna do that a little bit in this corner up here too. I'm just using my br same brush for the bronze. I'm gonna get an, up here under this lip. Again, I'm using, I want a lot of brush strokes in here. So I'm not being shy with brush strokes at all. I want that little bit of texture in my paint. So this is a metallic silver that I'm brushing into the bronze. You can tint metallic paints as well. So if I wanted to take my silver and create kind of a champagne color, I can tint it with a, you know, a brown or, um, you know, if I have a silver and I want to make it more of a charcoal color, you can tint it with a dark gray. So metallics can absolutely be tinted just like regular paints can. So I've got a little bit of my metallic brushed in there. It's just gonna thin out the patina in that area. I'm gonna spray it with my spray. So this Mr. Bottle just gives me a nice even spray. I'm not, I, I don't want drips on this. And then my green, because I only have one Mr. Bottle, I'm just holding this far away. So it just gets a fine mist on my piece. I'm gonna brush the spray into my paint. It's still gonna corrode it. It's just gonna be mixed into my paint instead of that drippy look on top of it. I have a little bit more of my metallic up here because it's kind of getting lost. Still using that cross hatching pattern. And now I'm coming back with my iron and brushing that in as well. So I hate to like leave it at this point because I know you guys are like, well, what is the finished look going to be? But I will finish this up. I just need to do the top at this point. I've done all three sides. So I just need to do the top and then the rest is just going to be a matter of waiting for this to dry. Um, we did this door way at the beginning and look at how far advanced it already is. I've got a really cool line of patina here. So it's frustrating because you want to come back and like, you know, fix that. But I can't even work on that anymore. I've just got to trust and let it do its thing. Hit this with a little more spray. But I can see the oranges are starting to define themselves. The blue is starting to define itself. So I think the oranges and the blues are going to be really pretty together. And I'm sorry to leave you guys hanging. But that is our finish tonight. So like I said, if you guys um, don't already, go follow my page at Brush by Brandy. And I will finish this up um, probably over the weekend. Um, from here, I'm going to let this dry. 
and then I will coat it in Dixie Belle Gator Hide. I'll do two coats of Dixie Belle Gator Hide on the entire body. And I use Gator Hide because Gator Hide will stop the reaction of the um, patina and then it will give it, give it a nice seal um, and, and a little bit of sheen on it too. Um, so it can be a functional piece that they can wipe down and use regularly. Um, so that's kind of it, you guys. Again, if you want to see the finished results, you're going to have to follow my page. I'll post here in the um, Angels and Cowboys group too. Um, so you guys can see it all done. So we're just going to wait on this one, see how it works itself out. If you guys want to try the Patina products, um, uh, my link for Dixie Bell Paint is up at the top. That's my affiliate link. And um, I want to sincerely thank Connie for letting me come on in the group and teaching this finish. I promise you it's going to be absolutely beautiful. <laughs> um, you know, I feel like I want to show you guys more and I can't. So um, thank you guys for having me. And um, I can't wait to show you guys what this looks like finished. You guys have a great night. If you have any questions, feel free to message me on my page too. Thanks. Good night, guys.